Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Gordon, and today I'm going to discuss the Veterinary Feed Directive, or VFD, and with the help of Mr. Greg Fogel, how to properly administer medications. The Veterinary Feed Directive is new legislation that became law on January 1, 2017. It was created to help regulate the use of medically important antibiotics in animal feed. Medically important antibiotics include those which are used in both humans and animals. VFDs apply to all animal farms regardless of species or the size of an operation. The antibiotics affected now require producers to obtain a VFD or written order from a licensed veterinarian for antibiotics to be mixed within the feed or a prescription from a licensed veterinarian for antibiotics to be mixed in the drinking water. A VFD does not allow extra label use. Therefore, the feed grade antibiotic must be used exactly as the manufacturer's label demands. To obtain a VFD, you must contact your veterinarian with whom you have a veterinary client patient relationship or VCPR. A VCPR means that you know your veterinarian and they know you and your animals. In most cases, veterinarians require at least a yearly visit with you and your animals to maintain a valid VCPR. Your veterinarian will then determine the need for your use of a VFD drug or feed. Your veterinarian will then issue a written and signed VFD order. Both you and your veterinarian must retain a copy of the order for at least two years. The original document is given to the feed distributor who releases the feed to the client. Producers must obtain separate orders for different groups of livestock and or to extend the treatment duration. A VFD is only valid for six months. VFD forms will be pre-printed and must contain the following information. The drug's name and the amount, indications of use, location of the animals, the number and kind of animals, the amount of feed to be mixed, the name, address, and phone number of the veterinarian, treatment date, VFD date, feeding instructions, residue withdrawals, warning or cautionary statements, and the vet's license and number and state. VFDs do not affect all antibiotics, only those administered in feed are affected. Some water-soluble antibiotics used in animals' drinking water are now require a prescription from your veterinarian. This is not the same as a VFD, but still require you to have a relationship with a veterinarian or VCPR. More information can be found at the website and link shown. If you have any more questions, do not hesitate to contact your veterinarian or local extension educator. Now that we have discussed VFDs, let's move to administering medications. It's important to keep in mind that proper administration of a medication is key to the care and well-being of your animal. Routes of administrations are presented on the instruction label of the medication. Basically, there are three routes to administering medications oral, topical, and injectable routes. We're going to discuss the types of injection methods and demonstrate the two most common. Intravenous, or IV, is an injection directly into the bloodstream of the animal. IV injections are usually done in the jugular vein and most often by a veterinarian. This type of injection is used to spread medication or fluids to all tissues in the body extremely rapidly. If medications are released too quickly or the vein is missed, serious complications can occur, potentially even death. For those reasons, IV injections are generally administered by a veterinarian due to the considerable training and skill needed to give IV injections. The two most common injection methods are intramuscular and subcutaneous. Intramuscular, or IM, is an injection directly into the heavy muscle tissues. These injections should be given in the neck of the animal. Avoid the rump and other high price cuts of meat as these injections can cause injection site damage. Hypodermic syringes inject medication directly into the muscle tissue. Regardless of the injection method, you should gather the equipment needed and place it within easy reach prior to catching the animal. Be sure to read and follow the directions on the medication or from your veterinarian. Open the package containing a sterilized disposable syringe. Pull the syringe plunger back to fill it with about the same amount of air as the dose of medication you will be giving. Push the needle through the rubber plug on top of the bottle and push the plunger in, forcing air into the bottle. Slowly draw the plunger back, drawing medication into the syringe. Fill the syringe to the recommended dosage. Be sure no air bubbles are in the syringe and then withdraw the needle from the bottle. Once you have the medication ready, catch and restrain the sheet. Ask an assistant to help you hold it. For an intramuscular injection, the preferred site of injection should be in the heavy muscle near the back of the head. Insert the needle into the muscle with a quick thrust. Make sure the needle is inserted all the way into the muscle, not just under the skin. Pull back on the plunger and watch for blood to appear in the syringe. This is a sign the needle may have entered a blood vessel. The injection should not be made if blood appears in the syringe. 
Slowly inject medication, pushing the plunger forward. Do not inject more than 10 cc's of medication in one site. Be sure to record all necessary information as part of your animal treatment record. Subcutaneous, or sub-Q, injections are given with a hypodermic syringe also. The medication is injected between the skin and muscle tissues. Injections should be given in the neck area again, but in some cases, such as with very small lambs, they can be given under the skin of the non-wooled area under and behind the front leg. The same initial process occurs. Once the animal is secured, grasp a fold of skin between your thumb and forefinger and slightly lift it, creating a tent. Insert the needle under the fold of skin parallel with the muscle. Slowly inject the medication by pushing the plunger forward. Remove the needle and let the sheep go. Once again, record all necessary information as part of your treatment records. Thank you for watching today's video. Good luck with your projects. And remember, if you have any questions at all, feel free to contact your local veterinarian or extension educator.